Intiam guys, welcoming you back. Uh, before starting the video, I want to just keep you updated. So I did some change in the YouTube channel. So what uh, this change might have caused is that all my previous comments on every video got removed. And um, so I did spend a little bit of time uh, to like and, uh, and uh, the comments uh, that happened since uh, the, the for all the videos I did but the comments are gone so don't be surprised if the comment is gone yes that's what happened YouTube deleted my comments in the uh, during the procedure of the account setting modifications so that being said don't be surprised uh, I'll start commenting again and like I said sometimes my comments are short but I do take the comments in consideration and I make a video about them and that video is about that only about a comment I got from yesterday's video about uh, the story of the cat dying because of vegetarian food and in the question there's a component of the question which I think is key to understand the whole process and perhaps having a better understanding of what I was sharing yesterday. So with this I welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Sri Nityananda Paramashivam. Uh, yes, I do upload many videos a day now, so stay tuned, keep posted. They're short, they're not there between 5 to 15 minutes, so I think they're manageable, so inviting you to check them all out. Um, yes, so the question was basically saying that everything that I shared well, yesterday's fine is great, but when you change the, the the diet of the cat, did the cat die prematurely? So I wanted to share about what I learned and uh, while being a Twamji and what Hinduism um, says or uh, the cognition from the space from which Hinduism is coming towards this whole experience of death, life and death. Uh, it's a very good question. Uh, and I think uh, you cannot find this kind of answer outside of Hinduism, at least I haven't found. And anyways, everything came out of Hinduism only, but that's a different story. Um, so the thing is, the thing is, yes, so the question is, the cat is, no, is technically, as per is dharma, supposed to eat meat. You ate vegetarian food, it died prematurely. Did you cause a premature death to the cat? That is the question that I'm going to answer in this video. The answer is no. And this is why. First, we need to have a better understanding of what is the cycle of life and death. Swamiji has shared about it in videos. You can check um, death videos or assuming the body when Swamiji talks about how it works to assume the body and what the scriptures also uh, mention because now Swamiji, everything that Swamiji shares is aligned to um, scriptures. So, a being decides to assume another body for the sake of experiencing something. As long as you are sharing, if your best experience in life is food, then you will decide within three kshanas, which is at the end when you leave the body at that moment, at the speed of three thoughts. So the more you have thoughts in your inner space, the faster that time is, micro milliseconds. And the less thoughts you have in your inner space, the more completion you have in your inner space, the more gap there is between each thought. So that time varies, but it's basically three thoughts. And within that time gap, you decide what you're going to do next. If you feel that the highest experience you had in this life is food, then in the next life you will decide, let me take a body which enjoys food. So you will assume, for instance, a big body, as long as you were sharing the purpose of assuming this body is to enjoy food. That is the purpose of the body. The moment the karma or the desire, desire is the source of the karma, the moment the desire is fulfilled, the being no longer feels that carrying this body is useful. So he decides to drop the body for the sake of another body to experience another type of experience. And that's why we take so many bodies before enlightenment because we go from, we go from experience to experience. And if we live an authentic life, we will experience the experience we want to experience fully. 
and complete the karma and decide to experience something else or ultimately just decide to drop all desires and go towards liberation, towards realizing you are pure consciousness, the Paramashivam experience. So the cat, the reason for which he assumed the body, the karma, the desire that the cat wanted, that the being wanted to fulfill through the body of a cat, when what I was sharing yesterday is that when you change to vegan, when you change the diet, the violence which is responsible for the desire, which is responsible for the decision of taking the, bo the body of a cat, that, this, that violence gets completed, the desire becomes fulfilled, the decision to enjoy the cat body no longer makes sense for that being because the desire has been fulfilled. So the being will decide, well, fair enough, I want another type of experience and this body is no longer suitable for that experience and the being decides to drop the cat body. So there is no such thing as dying prematurely unless you commit suicide. But that's a different story. But as, lo as long as you do not end your life, there is no premature death. It's just a decision to drop the body in order to go towards a different kind of experience of consciousness. When you eat food and you enjoy the pleasure of food, you enjoy a certain dimension of your consciousness. When you enjoy fine arts, when you enjoy a, a name and fame, these are all different desires which allow you, allows you to experience a certain dimension of consciousness, a certain expression of consciousness. But consciousness is much more than that. That is only one expression of it. Once your desire to experience that dimension of consciousness is completed, you no longer feel like, it's okay, I had it, I, I'm good. Once you feel like that, then you no longer feel that having the pig's body, for instance, it makes sense because the pig body is meant to enjoy food. If you start to want to enjoy name and fame, then you will take a human body. You will not take an animal body because an animal body, the brain and the nervous system and everything is not meant for you to cognize these psychological pleasures such as name and fame and then you will go towards that and like that we move little bit by little bit by the way that's why it takes forever and we need the grace of a guru and paramashiva because the desires like we it's like we get deluded we don't understand what's going on and we are not authentic so we don't complete the desires so we we leave the body incomplete and we feel oh my god i missed it i'm taking another body to re-experience it and then you forget and then you go through the cycle again and it's an endless cycle which, which is crazy so at some point you just you start to get fed up of the cycle you start to realize as you take many bodies your the maturity inside of your bio memory happens and you start to realize there has to be something higher than this because this is crazy. And that's when you start to go to go towards um, liberation, the, the desire to experience mukti or oneness with Paramashiva. And then you have Hinduism because Hinduism is all about that. Hinduism is all about this knowledge in every form, knowledge about how to go towards mukti. Um, unfortunately, many Indians today, they claim to be Indian, but... The thing is that Indian today is mostly a social cultural thing. The science of enlightenment, which is hidden underneath the lifestyle of Sanatana Hindu Dharma has been forgotten. And that's why Swamiji is here, because he's here to say, okay, it's great. You're doing this. It's better to go to a temple than to go to a club. No doubt about it. But there's a, there's a, sign, there's a purpose why we create temples and why we worship deities and why we relate. There's a purpose why we do yoga. There's a purpose why we do meditation. There's a purpose why we do puja. There's a purpose why we have guru. There's a purpose why we study scriptures. There's a reason. And deep down, it is all, it is the science of enlightenment because Hinduism and the Rishis and the Munis and the enlightened beings and the avatars of the past, they have created the lifestyle in such a way that this science of enlightenment is always there and that the lifestyle leads to enlightenment. But when the context of enlightenment is forgotten, then you live the lifestyle, but there's no seeking. So it stops there and it becomes superficial. And that's unfortunately what's happening today. People are doing things, but they have no clue why they're doing it. And that's very sad. And, and that is why I think that's why India is suffering and why Hindus are, are just being there. They are to a point where they're mocking themselves. I mean, that's another 
story for another video because it's a big topic, but Hindus have been humiliated and they've made like my experience I've seen I deep down I can see that Indians they really love their tradition deep down they like it but somehow they are convinced that liking this tradition is wrong and it's bad and that is because of the influence mainly of the British they came and the British could not understand the depth of Hinduism so they went through I don't know some kind of I guess inferiority complex and they decided that they would call these people uh, retarded and that uh, they need to evolve and then the Indians somehow they got impressed by the way British people were doing things and they started to feel sad and bad about their own tradition they feel stupid I feel that I, I've met many people and I feel that deep down there's an underlying thought current which is um, which is making Indians feel they are they are like ashamed of their who they are and their cultural heritage. And I think that is mainly because they lost the science of enlightenment and they're just following the cultural heritage kind of superficially. So this, what I'll share in this video, for instance, the science of life and death and taking a body, such a huge knowledge-based thing and it's so important because that's the fundamental thing that we come to experience in the body. And Hindus have answers to it. Nobody else has answers with that kind of understanding. And to make it into a science, a, reproduce, a reproducible experience, that's crazy. So now we're far away from that, but you know, it's coming back. And that's the purpose of Swamiji. That is the purpose of Sri Kailasa and reviving the Hindu nation and reviving the glory of Hinduism. And there's no reason to be ashamed. There's nothing great about the Western lifestyle. There's nothing great about the Western lifestyle. It's okay. It's definitely not great. So there's no need to be ashamed or try to copy these things. I remember, my God, I got so shocked. I'm changing topic, but I'm going to close the video before I go too far. But one last thing. I saw a music video. I think it was this Bajrang uh, Bali Hanuman, some song. And I saw the music video, and it's a song about the greatness of Hanuman, which is one of the, the gods of Hinduism, one of the incarnations um, of Nandi, actually. But anyways, Swamji talks about it in some satsangs. And Hanuman... It's great. And in the song, they have all these Indian looking people worshipping the deity of Hanuman. And then you have this guy coming in the picture and he is the one who is Hanuman. Like you, he's the one embodying Hanuman. The guy wears jeans and he wears a sweatshirt. Some, some Western like walking on the car, carpet walking thing. It's like it's ridiculous. It just shows how Indians got destroyed by Westerners. And they feel so ashamed about who they are and they feel that the Western culture is ultimate and that they need to copy it. Hell no, there's nothing to copy about the Western culture. I'm not saying it's bad, but you should not envy it. There's no reason to envy it. As my personal life choice, definitely Hinduism is so much better. The depth of cognition, the knowledge, everything, so much better. But I mean, I'm not saying that people who are living the Western lifestyle is bad. That's their decision and they're responsible for their decision. But I'm saying being ashamed of Hinduism, of being a Hindu, and the knowledge of Sanatana Hindu Dharma, and the, er and the heritage of Bharat, and being ashamed of that for the sake of the Western culture, that is silly, that is silly, and, and that has to stop, I mean, this is stupid, this is just stupid, so yeah, so that's what I want to share in this video, <laughs> the cat did not die prematurely, because um, it is not about you have 76 years to live. If you don't live these years, you're done. It's more, it's much faster than that. It's all about fulfilling the purpose for which you took the body. The moment the purpose for which you took the body is fulfilled, the consciousness inside of you, which is you actually, but we have to realize it, the consciousness decides to drop the body, assume another body, and continue the experience of different dimensions of its own consciousness. So with this, um, thanking you all for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, comment if you have any questions uh, like that I can answer in another video and uh, bring more the cognitions that I have gathered while being with Swamiji and living the lifestyle of Sanatana Hindu Dharma as Brahmachari. And um, yeah, so that's about it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Nityandam.
Shiva.